responding to any criticism or scheduling the matter for future consideration. And we see that we have three uh, people to make public comments. And the first one would be Mr. Doug Sam. Mr. Right here is good. That works. Uh, I, uh, tonight I'm speaking on behalf of both my wife and myself. So uh, Jennifer is our teacher here, and I'm an English teacher in high school. Jenny uh, teaches our K through 12, and I teach a variety of classes: AP, uh, Lit, Composition, English One, Two, Three, Four, uh, Communications, and Fitness. Uh, I'm also the J1 coordinator, uh, softball coach, and boys uh, basketball coach this year. Uh, that in January, I will be signing uh, a full time contract for this upcoming year. I just wanted kind of to make that announcement to all you guys at the same time. Uh, we're open to 0.5 type of contracts for a variety. We each have our own reasons on why we do not want to work full time. Um, but we also want to keep the door open uh, if, if other positions or part time positions. Uh, we've become available. We've enjoyed our, our year here. Uh, I'm also open. We're not leaving. We bought a home here. We're here. This, we, we're here in Ottawa. We, we're enjoying our time here. Uh, and, and we really value our work with the kids this year. Um, so, again, just kind of to reiterate that. And I'm certainly open to continue uh, potential coaching and potential coordinator positions or anything. A potential point five position with benefits. Um, we wish you all nothing but the best, and we wish this community nothing but the best. And again, we're we're not going anywhere. We're here, um, and so kind of put the ball in your guys' court if if you know the point five is something that is of interest. Then you know we are. Come see us. Okay. Thank you guys very much. Thank you. And next, I have Julianne Cooper. Okay. Uh, my name is Julianne, and I'm the parent of a pre-K student. I'm here to address a need I see in school and propose a solution. We know our school is given limited funds each year. And because we're a small size of student population, we don't get a lot of funds. However, our school has done amazing to keep the extracurricular activities going, even with limited resources. We know the amenities here, though, are getting old. And takes a lot of fun and we'd like to create an athletic booster club to support the athletic program with the school so we'll be creating a separate organization from the school and hopefully have its own 501c3 status i've researched and spoken with many booster club presidents and other schools both big and small they were kind to take time to walk me through how they were structured what they've done with their donations some of the things these clubs have done with their funds to support their school are purchased to uniforms Purchase training for players and coaches, create a whole experience during games to make it a fun environment for the community, funds to feed the teams on away games, purchase sports equipment, and much, much more. As of now, our school or coaches have had to pay for all of these and therefore taken from other things the school could have used, such as increased teacher pay. I was wanting to start a school booster club last year, but was discouraged by the lack of school support we would get if we were our own organization. However, when talking to these other school booster clubs, we found some common denominators for a successful booster club. Number one, they were their own organization apart from the school. Number two, they worked well with the athletic director. Three, they have healthy relationships with school administration. Four, the school allows them to use their property to fundraise. Five, the school allows them to use their school logo. Six, even the school advertises on their own website about the booster club to promote involvement and donations. When I asked Ajo School if we could fundraise during a game, I was immediately shut down. When I asked if we could use a school logo for different things, I was denied saying it was not allowed. I'd like the school board to consider where these rules are and if we can consider voting change to now allow accepted boosters to fundraise on school grounds and use the logo. Just because we've been doing something a certain way for a long time doesn't make it a good reason to keep doing it. I'd appreciate if the board would grant for permission for us to work together. The whole purpose of this booster club is to help our students in school. We're not making a profit off this. If anything, my guess that I will personally lose money doing this, but I really, really believe if we can collaborate with each other, we can create great experiences for our players, teams, and community through sports. We can have an organization to help apply for grants, receive donations, fix up school property, purchase sports equipment, and as a community, better support our athletic program. Thank you. Thank you. 
Coach Buddy Cooser. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Coach Buddy Cooser, uh, coach the football team, and I uh, have a, a daughter in school here as well. Um, I wanted to come and formally apologize uh, for any miscommunication uh, into the community of uh, the field situation. Uh, I wanted to just give a really simple timeline of what I was told and what happened so there's a little bit of clarity to the situation. Because <laughs> the last thing I want is for there to be any um, ill feelings or feelings of deceit or um, kind of yeah, causing contention in the community because that's the last thing in the, in the world that I want. So on April 22nd, I was invited to attend a coach's clinic for the CAA. And in that clinic, they one of the topics of discussion was the poor field conditions for several schools. The director of the CAA pulled me aside during lunch and said, Ajo is one of the schools that will not be able to have a home game unless you fix your field. And so obviously I was a little bit panicked because our season is in three months. So as soon as I got out, I called all of our volunteer coaches that are going to be working with us this year and just explain the situation. I never said that the season would be canceled. Just said, hey, we have to fix the field or they're not going to let it play at home. Um, Nine days later, uh, Dr. Soltero was good enough to meet with all of us coaches and with Jose Yon. And um, Jose was actually able to get clarification that they would let us play at home, but we still, there were fixes on the field to make. Uh, but we would be able to have our home games, thankfully, this season. Um, so a couple of days later, May 4th, uh, well, so we put out the call. I put out the call to our coaches, hey, here's the situation. They then went to the community, just resources locally, and said, hey, here's the situation. We need help. And so the Chamber of Commerce ended up holding a special meeting, and then they uh, scheduled the time to go and look at the school on the field on May 4th. And I, I had nothing to do with that. I was invited a couple hours before and said, hey, the Chamber is going to be here. If you want to be here, swing on by. So... I, I went and by, and uh, I didn't tell Dr. Sotero. Honestly, I never, never even came to my mind that he would um, want to be there. <laughs> so, anyways, they went, they looked at the field, they took pictures, and they were blown away at the conditions of the field that it was let go to, to that extent. Um, they were just shocked. And so, obviously, most of you saw the Facebook post that night of what's happening to our field. They're canceling our season, and there was definitely some un true things that were said in that post. Uh, I saw it the next day and actually jumped in and tried to clarify to say, hey, we do get a play here. Here is our season. Um, you know, it, it's not getting canceled. But I just wanted to say that the, the yeah, so that, I apologize. If I, I that was never my intent. Um, if I could just have one, one last thing I want to say, <clears throat> the response to the community, um, I do feel it was helpful to clarify that the season was still happening. Um, I, I got backlash or con con concerned members of the community that were there and saw the field that said, why is the school saying it's safe? Because it's not. It basically discredited what they just saw in first person. And I have to say that we had boys get hurt last year on that field. Like, it's not a safe field. It's not, uh, we have to adjust our practice the way that we practice because it's not a safe field. And we want to help, the community wants to help. We have access to a lot of funds, a lot of interested alumni that want to support. And so in no way is this a us versus them. We want to be on the same team. We want to help it however we can. And um, I think the booster is going to be a great way that we can help contribute to the community and to the, the school program in general. So, thank you. I apologize. I went over. Thank you very much. I'm not supposed to comment. So I'm probably going to get in trouble. Well, we're not allowed. We're not allowed <laughs> to comment. All I want to say is Lonnie, we have a not... good superintendent. <laughs> okay. We have a very, very good superintendent. And he's very proactive. Yeah. And so I'm sure you that knowing him like I know him, that you're going to be happy. It's been nothing but a great experience right. thus far. Okay. We've had a great experience. Lonnie, we're not allowed to comment I on this. I know. I just want to make... That shows support for our superintendent, right? That's what I wanted to do. And I believe so, that, but we're also not allowed to comment on things that aren't on the agenda. Sorry. So. <laughs> no, no, thank you. 
Okay, next item of business personnel is the certified employment of teacher Luella Salavante. Okay, Mr. President, members of the board, um, let me see, let me try this. Hold on, this is the right one. Here we go. Uh, explanation, members of the board and um, members in the audience. <laughs> uh, Ms. Luila Salavante has been interviewed for the position of classroom teacher for the 2023-24 academic year. Reference checks are in progress and a certified contract will be issued once satisfactory references are required. Uh, recommendation that uh, there is no board action needed at this time. This is an informational item only. Okay, any questions or discussion? And on to the next item, personnel certified employment for the 23-24 school year of teacher Anna Abella. Mr. President, members of the board, Anna Abella has been interviewed for the position of classroom teacher for the 2023-2024 academic year. Reference checks are in progress and a certified contract will be issued once satisfactory references are acquired. There is no board action necessary. This is an informational item only. Okay. Any discussion on that? Then the next item is the personnel reassignment of classified position manager of grounds, Daniel Cotton. Uh, Mr. President, members of the board, uh, Daniel Cotton has been interviewed and selected for the reassignment of position from maintenance custodian to manager of grounds. Grounds manager will be responsible for cleaning and maintaining sports fields year round. I want to uh, add that. Um, grass, pavement, sidewalks, and all areas between and around district buildings. A recommendation there is no board action needed at this time this is an informational item only is this the does he get any pay compensation with this yes he will okay yes, he will. Yes. and part of the reason why we wanted to uh, uh this was an internal post to give uh members on our team on our AUSD team a chance to see that there is uh, the possibility for growth and advancement within the district to uh, employees first and a very good process, right, Dr. Chabot? He and I and, and Mr. Yon were on the committee. Three of our internal members uh, applied. It was great to see them step up, and it was a very competitive process. So, uh, good to see. Excellent. So, again, what I've seen about our superintendent is that he identifies problems and he fixes them, right? He fixes them. And this was his step to fixing the problems that we have with our sports fields right it was a, it was a big it was a big uh just seeing how other districts uh in southern arizona have specifically this kind of team set up for the sole purpose of focusing on the sports facilities the fields and the gym year round mm -hmm. it seems to me it'll make it more efficient to take care of the grounds all over the school including you know, yes sir. the common yeah, areas and all watch, of that cut the grass sidewalks but now we have a focus and a, and a game plan for year-round all of this. Okay. I know I've heard uh, teachers singing Daniel's praises, so I'm, I'm sure he's up for the task. Right. Yes, sir. Okay. Next item, personnel, is the approval of employment of teachers and parapros for the June summer school. Mr. Hopkins, members of the board, uh, the following certified staff are being recommended to teach June summer school from June 5th to 8th and June 12th to 15th and 8th, 15th to 1th, 15th each day. Donette Williams, Chelly Arancon, Olivia Garcia, Art Maningo, Babu Casey, Anthony Delara, Jody Delara, and Rhea Fernandez. The following paraprofessionals are being recommended to be one on one aides during spring break intercession Bernadine Tamayo, Rafaela Duran, Gloria Gutierrez, Kristen King, and Amber Ortiz. There is no board action needed at this time. This is an informational item only. One question I have is I know Kristen King was just hired on by Copper News. She Going to be able is is this taking that into account? You know, mm, do you want to add something? Yes, I talked to her about that. She said that um, because uh, summer school is only from eight to one, she's and it's only for two weeks. She's going to work it in, and she's um, <coughs> she's working at the at um, <coughs> here. And if her one on one isn't here, and she's not needed as a substitute. Then she'll just go back and forth. There's no sense in her staying here. Okay. She just a typo there, huh? Spring break intercession should be yeah. summer. Yeah, yeah. that's okay. why that's oh, part. Oh, sorry about that. Um, 
<laughs> we do have one more name to add that will be on the Wednesday agenda, but I only got the name this morning. It was emailed to me Friday afternoon, and I didn't tomorrow's catch it. Tomorrow's agenda? Huh? Tomorrow's. Uh, tomorrow's agenda. Yeah. Um, but I couldn't add it to this one because it moved already past the 24 hours. So on tomorrow's agenda, uh, Queenie Della Roma is going to be added, but I couldn't add it to this one because we had already passed the 24 hours. If you are, you've already added it to tomorrow's? To tomorrow's, yes. Yeah. Okay, excellent. And she'll be on it the July jumpstart also, but she's not on this July jumpstart because we can't change the agenda. Okay. Any other discussion? Okay. Next item, personnel approval of employment of teachers and parapros for the July jumpstart. Thank you for July. Uh, the following certified staff are being recommended, uh, Mr. President, members of the board, to teach July jumpstart from July 10th to 13th, 17 to 20 from May 15 to 115 each day. Gary Macarayo, Charlie Arancon, Rhea Fernandez, Babu Casey, Alona Lagria, Roger Patnanag, Dodi Dallara. Anthony Delara and Nick Alparito. The following paraprofessionals are being recommended to be one on one aides during July K Jumpstart Bernadine Tamayo, Rafaela Duran, Gloria Gutierrez, Evelyn Sanchez, Amber Ortiz. There is no board action needed at this time. This is an informational item only. Okay, I see Mr. Alparito is if certified. Yeah, what is that? Do we mean? have a plan if he is not completely certified? We, we, will, we will figure out a plan. Okay. We will be in, in, in con we have been in constant contact with, with him and Dr. Travolta and I will continue to work with him and figure out a plan. Okay. Any other questions? <clears throat> okay. Next item then is extra pay position employment. Mr. President, members of the board, have the following employees that have expressed a desire to perform designated extra pay positions for the 2023-24 school year. Lonnie Guthrie the third assistant football coach and Malin Lewis volunteer football baseball coach. There is no board action needed at this time. This is an informational item. So I have a question. Okay. With me on the school board. I'm sorry. Kevin Lonnie be paid with me on the school board. Yes, he doesn't live in the same house. Yes. Yeah. Thank God. <laughs> 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 we can't. We can't. It could be then uh, it, you cannot pay, but because even though you're related, but you live in separate households, then you're you're technically okay. Same way Eric and, and Rose Cameron could be on the board at the same time. Okay. They lived in separate houses. Yeah, I think it has to do with whether his getting paid would have a financial impact to you, which would happen if you live in, in the same house, but since you're not, it's I just want to make that. Yes, sir. Apparent. Appreciate that. I do have a question about Malin though. Is is just to clarify this, is he only volunteering for football or is he volunteering for both? Both. Okay. I should put an and, not an either or. Okay. Okay. If there's no other discussion, on to the next one, which is business, the 2023 district annual expenditure budget revision. Mr. President, members of the board, um, in accordance with Arizona Revised Statutes uh, 15905 and 15-910, by May 15th, the board may revise the school district annual expenditure budget after notice has been given and a public meeting has been held. Attached is the district annual budget expenditure budget revision. There is no board action needed at this time. This is an informational item only. However, we have our current business manager that we have through uh, True Professionals. Mr. Jeremy Gaius, who serves as a business manager in Tolleson Union High School District. We're going to connect with him over here. Uh, I welcome everyone to come over here. He's going to go through the information. Uh, you're welcome to bring your laptop with you also that has the attachment. And he's going to go through in detail um, the presentation. So please come on over here. All right. Well, so Jeremy, how are you? Good. Good. So, Jeremy, we have um, we have a member of the board here, 
a few of our members from our community. So uh, I don't know if you can see them all, but you have uh, Mr. Kevin Rodriguez, and you have Mr. Hopkins right up here in the front, our board president. Right behind uh, Mr. Rodriguez, we have Ms. Olson, one of our board members. Next to her to her left, right behind Mr. Hopkins is Mr. Uh, Guthrie, Mr. Monty Guthrie. We have Dr. Lance Chabot to his left. And we have also, um, who's our principal, and we have two uh, well-respected members in our community. I don't know if you can see them. We have Coach Cruiser and his wife, Mrs. Julianne Cruiser. So uh, Angelina's right here. So Jeremy, uh, take it away. All right. Uh, Mr. President, members of the board, just going to give you guys a budget update and talk about the budget revision that you'll be uh, hopefully approving tomorrow. So hopefully you can see the, I'm sharing my screen so you can, you can also follow along with that see what's already attached in the board meeting, but the one that says budget update are the slides that I'm going through right now. Uh, so looking at the agenda, we're going to, we're going to talk about the projected uh, fiscal year 23 ending balances, uh, and then some adjustments that we're going to make for the new revision. Go over some of the expected legislation, and actually have uh, more recent information. They just dropped the budget today, so I'll, uh, I'll talk about how those under three phases of the budget that just passed on today. Uh, and then uh, some of the changes that are needed for next year and the sustainability of, of implementing some of those changes. All right, so these are your projected balances as they stand right now. Uh, what you can see is, is looking at six uh, very specific funds right here your maintenance and operations, your capital, your classroom site fund, instructional improvement fund, uh, gifts and donations, and school plan. And I'll explain in a little bit why we're looking at those specific funds. Uh, but you can see from the far right column that your balances. Are uh, just over 3.7 million for all of these funds combined. And in that difference column, that kind of gives you um, a, a gauge as to how fast you're spending the money versus how fast it's coming in. And you can see that right now you're spending less than what's coming in on an annual basis. And, and that's what's uh, helping the balance to grow for three years. So by 156,000 uh, more revenue coming in, that's so much going out for expenses. But a total uh, budget balance is sitting there at 3.7 million. So, we look at how we're going to tweak things for the May revision. There's going to be a shift of 150,000 of uh, district additional assistance over into MO. Uh, there's going to be a shift of 125,000 of capital expenditures over into full plan. And prior to submitting the AFR, we'll probably have some other minor shifts. Uh, I think it'll be, be again just putting the money where it's needed. Uh, so we're shifting across the funds to make sure that we get things into the right bucket for how we're planning on spending the funds in the upcoming year. So to show you how that changes, uh, the total still remains the same. The difference is that now MO will have a higher budget balance carried forward and capital will have a higher budget balance carried forward um, with school plan. Um, you know, coming down significantly and absorbed a lot of that capital that was shifted over this way. Again, if you look at the previous slide, we had M O on track to be at 734, um, capital at 936, full plan at, at 1.8, and instead moving those numbers to 884, 911, and then 3001 for school plan. So school plan can be used for any capital purpose, um, and so we're going to use school plan to take up um, some of the capital expenses, which allows us to shift some of the revenue that was targeted for capital, shift that over to m and and it gives us some better balances to work with when we look at our dollars for next year uh, in m and capital. So that would be, we're pushing money forward there so that way those two funds can absorb some of the need for next year. All right, so overall, uh, 3.6 million of that, of that $3.7 million balance, that, that would be one time funding that's available, but 156 of it is ongoing revenue, and that's because we have more revenue coming in and funds reporting out. Uh, but still shifting to make sure that we get the, the money into the right bucket for how we're planning on spending. All right, this is 
a look, and I'll tell you where the updates are, but this is a look at uh, pending legislation. The latest update is we just had a uh, budget bill to drop. There's a possibility that they get this budget bill approved by Wednesday. Um, they would be out of session yet. There's still a few other things they can do, but uh, they're going to try to rush the budget through if they have the most for it. Um, it includes the inflation increase for ML, so that stays at 2%. Uh, there's a shift of results based funding over to the base. Originally valued at 1%.
one time we have news of the houses that are available for one time spending uh, to track down. Um, the added one time expenses that would leave you with uh, 3.5 of, uh, of ongoing ongoing revenue. This one time expense includes the special education bus. So that would leave you with 3.5 of one time available. And so we look at a sustainability test. With the state is doing their budget, uh, they're looking three years out, and, and essentially, if they don't get rent in three years, and we feel like they're going to lose this, I would say look five years out uh, is a better rule set up. If you're looking good after five years, then the budget is good. This would have sustainability of 7.6 years, so assuming no other new revenue comes in, no other new expenses, 7.6 years, this would run out. So that's, that's pretty good on sustainability test. And again, this is based on the prior numbers. The numbers right now under the current budget that got dropped are actually going to be a little bit better. And that uh, sustainability would actually be a little bit higher than that. So overall, uh, we have some healthy balances available right now. Uh, these changes planned for next year will start to draw those balances down a bit, uh, but they are sustainable. And there, you, could, you could be doing a lot more uh, if. If uh, the board wanted to seek local support uh, between uh, bonds and overrides, the, the board could garner uh, additional funding for the district that could uh, do things like address the football field. But right now, the ability to football field, um, you're, you're running about $3.5 million to cover football field track. I'm um, looking through the district's upgrade and see it. So they're running about $3.5 million. Uh, to put that in context, if, if every Homeowner who has an assessed value of primary, you know, an estimated assessed value of $100,000 was willing to give $10 more a month on their on their property tax bill. Uh, that would more than cover a brand new football stadium complete with track and everything else to a bond. Um, that's just to put it in the context of like how the, the local support and sometimes fund these big things. Unfortunately, athletic facilities. Are not an item that's covered by school facilities board under minimum adequacy guidelines. Um, so districts are kind of on their own for figuring out how to address these types of issues. Um, aside from that, though, I can take any, any budget questions you guys may have. Thank you, Jeremy. Um, thank you for the presentation, um, Mr. Hoffman. I think this at least will make sure I have the three left to see the increase in pay and how are we classify it. Employees to bring that up to 30 hours of insurance. That's been that sustainable for 20 years. Yes, that's right. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Jimmy. And we will see you tomorrow, but we'll talk to George probably, right? Thank you. Yes, Joyce will be sitting in with you guys. Well, I want to say real quick, I'll just jump in here real quick um, for our board. And uh, I know you can't see me. <laughs> All right. Um, we have, I just wanted to share everyone that Jeremy's really gone above and beyond. He's doing great work. He's up in Tulsa Union High School District, kind of running things up there. But uh, we met, we finally connected yesterday. We, we met four or five times. And we went over this yesterday about 11 to 12 30 on Sunday. He's very dedicated, very detailed, transparent, so that you can see uh, what we have and where it is. And what I really like is the sustainability part, especially to right now, every employee here on Ajo and the Unified School District's campus will have a chance to have health insurance. So that's that's very great. So um, thank you, uh, Jeremy, and um, we'll keep in touch. Absolutely. Thank you, David. Thank you so much. I
just want to say a soccer field is a lot less than three and a half million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> That's our ping pong table. <laughs> That's our ping pong table. <laughs> How about a golf table? Okay, so next item of business is the approval of the disposal of library books. Yes, sir, Mr. President, members of the board. Um, there we go. Uh, Dr. Donnell Conley has weeded the school library and is seeking board permission to discard approximately 385 library books. These books are recommended for disposal based upon lack of circulation and condition. Uh, my recommendation, there is no board action necessary. This is an informational item only. How will these books be disposed? I will turn to our historian, uh, Ms. Angelina. She, what did she share with you? So, historically, two ways. She either, uh, she's going to try to run a summer program. And usually with like a summer program, they, uh, they come like they do summer school and they read and do activities and she bundles them up and like hands them out. Okay. And gives out to uh to kids that come to the summer program. Um she also is like it's just totally blown and none of the kids want to read it or it's so old that you know it's falling apart, then those usually we have to dispose of. We have to take them to the dump. Okay. Um but if it's a good like book and it's just hasn't been in circulation um sometimes she'll get like a book that's a um and then switch it out with like a one of the new uh comic books mm -hmm. so then they're still reading but it's pictures of kids talking with you know bubbles and stuff like that it looks like a comic book but it's donkey Whoopi or, or or whatever a, a copy of a classic and they're more interested in reading it that way than they are the yeah. actual mm -hmm. old fashioned way yeah so then she'll she'll dispose of that book and then get it, or she'll buy an ebook with the fifteen thousand that we have, mm -hmm. and the ebook will be they'll read the ebook better than they will old fashioned. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, she's got a handful of ways that she can. And like, we can't donate any of these to the public library. Okay. We try. We actually tried that one year and. We donated, we got special permission because it was public library. So it's one uh, organization to another organization. And then three years went by, and then they donated the same book back to us. And we were like, yeah, that doesn't work. That doesn't work. Yeah. Okay. So, um, but like we said, if we, you know, give them away or we actually take them physically to the dump, if they release them there. And that's what we have to do because it's taxpayers' money mm -hmm. that these books are bought by. So there's different procedures that we have to follow. So were all these books purchased post fire? Um, no, well, some of them on the list were from 93, 94, and 95. Um, when I mean, uh, but the fire didn't happen until after 2017. The the trust was really good, they had a uh they called it an ozone filter. So every book that was in here when the fire went through got placed in an ozone filter. And it, basically what I what I heard it was just a big chamber and then they suck up all the oxygen out and it pulls the nastiness out the of the nastiness out of all of the books. Yeah, like there's one book on here from 71. Oh my gosh. Yeah. There's the oldest book I've seen yeah. on any of these lists published in 1864. Well, because there's a published <laughs> And there's an acquired date. Yeah, it was acquired in 95, but I just, so it was the, the oldest. The acquired date is different from the, the original yeah. published. Because we have the same book, one of them published in 71, the exact same book published in 1864. That might be an antique. Yeah. <laughs> okay, any well, other questions about that? Very good. Next item is the discussion of the third board goal. Mr. President, members of the board, um, first and foremost, I, you know, when I'm looking here, we didn't put the attachment here. So what I'm going to do is I'll read to you what I put together based on your comments the last meeting, and I'll follow up with uh, sending this to you. See, because I'll have this as a draft. Please look it over. Give me feedback. Um, this is a, a governing board goal three. Ajo Unified School District will continue with the strategic direction focused on the critical academic areas of opportunity for our students. Um, 
administration and the leadership team will make sure that curriculum and instruction resources beyond textbooks and class reading intervention, math and science curriculum are aligned with state and district standards. The leadership team did share with me some additional resources just to share with all of you. <clears throat> Muzella is an online platform for uh, ELA, English Language Arts, and Vision Math for K6. Uh, M Class Dibbles is very critical. Eighth edition screener for foundational literacy. A move on when reading requirement for students that are having need some extra help with reading. Tier three support for ask for student at risk students. Amplify Reading RAS Plus and Muzella also science and social studies online platform, but also uh, the leadership team is working on a potentially new science adoption. Is that right? So we're trying to see what we what we can do to uh, site for a science adoption. It also addresses the standards. I know Ms. Rodriguez mentioned that last time to be aligned with the national science standards. So this is a good goal. It's our third goal, your third goal. And so we have a, this is a good step in the right direction, going more towards on our, our strategic plan and, and, and things like that. Any discussion? Okay. And we Next item on the agenda is the call for future agenda items. Does anybody have one? I think I'm, oh, I'll let you go. go on. <laughs> um, I'm hoping maybe because we're, well, I guess we're at a point now where we're renewing contracts and we are seeing that some of our staff members are opting not to renew. I'm hoping maybe we can somehow put together an exit interview of some sort mm -hmm. so that way we can get some feedback as to why um, staff members are opting out of their contract, um, kind of just kind of checking in, okay, what can we do better? I know we we, we did the budget or are we doing the budget now, uh, being able to provide more um, resources and benefits for our staff members, but I just kind of want to get, um, I guess, their input as to what other areas can we improve on, improve on, so. Okay. And then one uh, item I'd like to add to a future agenda. Um, like we changed the, uh, Dr. Saltero and I talked about it and we changed Wednesday's board meeting to Tuesday. Technically by how our policy states it, it's only in an emergency that he and I are supposed to be able to do that or it can be changed by a vote of the board. I didn't wanna call a special session of the board just to vote on changing the date. Um, and I talked, I consulted with the district's lawyer and he said, we're fine. This had come up last year at one point and the suggestion was made that oh, we should really look at that policy and maybe see if we can change it a little bit to give us a little bit more freedom. We hadn't done that yet. So I'd like to put on agenda maybe for, not for tomorrow night, of course, because it would be too late, but maybe for the next special session that we, we look at that policy and if there's a way that we can adjust it that gives us that flexibility. It doesn't happen often. Um, and like I said, I'm allowed to, we're allowed to in the state of, if there's an emergency or something's going on, it makes it dangerous for people to come if there's, you know, massive storm going on. Or if I know for a fact beforehand that we won't have a quorum, mm -hmm. I can move it. Um, like I said, I did consult with uh, the district's lawyer and he said, we're completely fine with changing it this time, but ideally, it would be best to do it with a board vote. So I was thinking of looking back and uh, looking at that policy. I think it's policy BE that states when we can change, when we can adjust a meeting. Um, but I just wanted to put that out there for a special session to discuss that and maybe consider changes to it. Okay. Are there any other uh, future agenda items? If not, we'll ask for a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion. I'll second it. Ms. Olson? Aye. Mr. Duffin? Aye. Mr. Hopkins? Aye. Ms. Rodriguez? Aye. Pass is 4 0. The meeting adjourns at 6 19. I'm taking my notes here. Was that your father that passed away? Oh.